Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, and today, here are the books that I've been reading this week. Um, and also, just as a thing before I start on the video proper, um, I am also going to be doing a very long overdue uh, Q&A, which thank you to the person who reminded me in the comments, um, from when I hit 4k um, subscribers. Uh, so yeah, get your questions in down below. Um, things you want to know. Try, try not to make them too spicy, because last time some of them were, were interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, whether those are questions about me, about books I like, about, I don't know, other stuff, um, I'll eventually then cover them in another video. But yeah, feel free to pop some questions down below. Um, or if you'd rather send them, I don't know, on Instagram, if that's easier. I don't know. Who knows? Great. Cool. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, feel free to send them over and I'll do a video where I kind of take them all um, in one go. But without further ado, let's get stuck into the books that I've been reading this week. Um, so yeah, again, <laughs> I say again, uh, like I'm always constantly surprised by this. But yeah, this week has been one of those ones where actually like physically reading books has been really in fits and starts where I'll be on like a long train journey or something and that's when I tend to do a bit more reading um, or walking around quite a lot with some audiobooks. Um, so let's get started talking about a few of those. Um, and the first, the book that was a real standout for me this week that I really want to speak about um, is The Unfamiliar by Kirsty Logan. Um, and I I feel like she's, she's an author whose fiction I keep on feeling like I um, want to check out and then never quite doing it. Um, so I was really excited to just sort of see this in the library when I was wandering around. Um, and essentially it's, uh, as the sort of the, the subtitle suggests, a queer motherhood memoir. Um, it's a story about her and her partner, her, her wife, trying to, um, trying to have a baby. And essentially the, the opening, I mean, it's an incredibly brutal book in, in a lot of ways. So if you're a bit squeamish about some of the things um, around childbirth um, and or have some sort of personal reasons why you might not necessarily want to delve into a lot of the the kind of complexities around trying for children, sometimes not having children, all that kind of stuff, then maybe maybe it's a, a book to kind of pass on for a bit. But I think this is just an exceptionally written book um, in so, so many ways. So, so at the heart of it, it's, it's all written in the second person, which means that you kind of get this odd immediacy of, you know, you tell your partner, blah, 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 you know, you check the pregnancy test and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a real kind of intensity that comes, but also kind of a confessional feel almost, or a kind of a real, um, a real closeness um, to it. And it's, it's really touching. Um, but she, she sort of splits the book into several different parts. So there's the first part of the book where her wife is trying for a child, um, a second part of the book where she herself is trying, um, and then a few other bits as she sort of leads up towards um, the birth of a child. It's, it's really powerfully done, I think, just in the ways that it captures the um, the really complex and mixed feelings that people have around some of these things. You know, the kind of the this overwhelming desire to have a child, but the the absolute terror that can come with that. The the ways that your life is transformed by there being a child in your life um, or not, um, and um, particularly the end part of this book, she. Um, uh, this is not a spoiler, but she talks about um, the, this whole book having been written in fragments because the whole ordeal of everything that happens in the book often left her with not much uh, sort of focus or attention or brain power at any given time. And so she basically wrote them as small notes here and there, which she then sort of later transcribed. Um, it's an incredibly raw and honest book. Um, that I, I really, really impacted me in, in quite a few ways. I just found it really deeply touching, um, really heartbreaking in a lot of ways, but also just really, I'm saying really a lot here, but very, very powerful book. Um, and um, she name checks Doreen Negrofa's uh, book as well, um, which uh, was a, a book that I absolutely adored. Um, that was also kind of a, a really beautiful book about motherhood. Um, and so, it's just this really glorious way of looking at some 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 really dark and and deep feelings, but also the 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 ways that humans try to put into words things that are almost so inexplicable. Um, but I think she does an incredibly good job of doing that here. 
Next up, um, I read two books by the same author, um, so I'll kind of combine them into one because they do quite a lot of similar themes. So both by Michael Pedersen, um, the first being The Cat Prince and Other Poems, um, and his uh, prose book, uh, Boy Friends, um, and I'll talk about them sort of briefly separately, but they, they overlap a lot in terms of themes, particularly around friendship, particularly around male friendship, um, and I found it really just beautiful reading them both. So... Um, in the Cat Prince and Other Poems, he talks quite a lot. I literally, as I'm moving this book, I'm sort of suddenly realizing that this is a cat's anus. There we go. Uh, uh, nice sort of sparkly thing there for you. Um, and, uh, these poems talk a lot about Scotland, where he's from, um, and particularly kind of friendships and kind of relationships between people. I um, mean, this is something that comes up a lot in Boy Friends um, as well, but kind of combining the two here, he is. Um, obsessed is maybe too strong a word, but he's sort of preoccupied with male friendships, and particularly the ways that often, you know, um, friendships between women are allowed to have this kind of intensity and closeness um, and vulnerability that often uh, in a lot of societies is sort of seen as being suspicious uh, between men. And he sort of writes from the perspective of a man who is has, you know, several close male friends, um, that are just friendships and he also sort of essentially examines the 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 weirdness behind that the fact that we think of them as just friendships when actually friendships are often some of the most empowering um and and beautiful sort of relationships that we have in our lives and and so both books both this and boyfriends deal really beautifully i think with um with the ways that we do this boyfriends is a bit more of a kind of narrative of him going over the lives of, um, you know, the kind of the various people he's known over his life, um, including, you know, some there's a sort of central friendship in the book where he's talking about them after they've died um, and the way he tries to sort of almost memorialise them and their friendship. But also there's that kind of strangeness because for a lot of people, they say, oh, you know, your friend died. That's really sad. Um, but it's treated differently, perhaps as, you know, as if a, a, a family member had died where, you know, your role in the funeral or your role in other parts is seen as different. So I just think he, he writes so, so compellingly about just the ways that that people kind of care for each other and look after each other. And I just found it really quite touching. Next up, um, and I read uh, The English Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt. Um, and this is a really short book. I mean, probably 60, 70 pages or thereabouts. Um, and uh, it, this this sort of novella I thought was really interesting in, in many ways. It was one of those ones where I kept on seeing people talking about it and saying, oh, yeah, this book is fantastic. You've got to check it out. And I don't think I'd quite realised how small it was. Like, I thought it was short. Uh, I didn't quite realise it was that short. And it, as a result, it kind of has this slightly dreamlike feel to it because it's so short that it kind of is told in these little episodic bits. Um, yeah, so really, really interesting. Um, anyway, the whole the book is about uh, there is a young woman at the heart of it and she is, I think she's about 17 in the book. Um, and she is... Um, from a family that we later find out has these sort of associations as being a bit of a criminal um, kind of thing. Um, you know, she's seen as potentially being uh, kind of cut from the same cloth, pun unintended, in terms of, because a lot of this book's about clothing, um, as, as having potentially, you know, cheated and eluded people. Um, and what happens is that we sort of slowly through the book find out the ways that she has accrued a lot of money um, and particularly a lot of that money has been given to her on the proviso that she will write a a tell-all memoir about the family that she's from and as we kind of go through the book we start to find out how much of a sort of trickster she might be on this but she also has these sort of moments of almost self-delusion where or maybe sort of trying to delude the the reader where she sort of talks about like oh yes well you know I want to go here and be inspired and do this and this money gets transferred into my account but we later find out maybe quite how devious she really is um and so I just found it her uh, really compelling as a central character because she is just um, in that wonderful kind of teenage way, is almost untouchable because she kind of doesn't care. <laughs> and so there's this element to which she is so... Um, she's reveling in and enjoying the fact that nobody's touching her. Like, nobody can really do this. They need her. They need her to tell the story and they will pay her handsomely for it. 
she doesn't necessarily have to follow through on her end of the deal. Um, and so I find her really interesting and compelling as this kind of anti-figure um, that you kind of almost root for, but also sort of would hate to know. Well, not even sort of, you would hate to know them. Um, they, you know, uh, so yeah, it's been really, really, it was just a really fantastic little book. And I, I just thought it was very, very well done. Um, it's one of those books where adding any more, I think would have taken away from what it's really achieving. Um, Cause it almost needs to have that episodic sort of daydream quality to it. Um, so I really, really enjoyed it. So those have been the books that I've read this week. Um, it's a relatively short list, um, but uh, would love to hear your thoughts um, on any of these if you've read them. And yeah, please do remember um, to pop in some questions for the Q&A. Um, I will, uh, yeah, in hopefully in a few weeks, we'll do a video on that. So you've got some time to put them all together. Um, anyway, take care and speak to you all soon. Bye bye.